What's going on YouTube? My name is Joshua Wade. I want to thank you for taking the time to check out this video. And the topic of conversation today would be uh, pretty much audience versus universal audio and the top five reasons why I switched. Number one, the freaking headphone jack or the dual headphone jack on the audience is amazing. It is so hard to find an interface at this price point with the dual headphone jacks. And I think that's the biggest oversight in our universe. Right now your only options if you don't have one is you gotta get a splitter, which that sucks if your headphones aren't the same because then your volumes are gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so, or you can get a headphone amp, which that sucks because now you're lugging something else around and not all of them are battery powered, so now you have a power supply, which in my opinion defeats the purpose of making a bus powered interface for portability. Number two. So one of the main reasons that I switched um, from Audient to, or from Universal Audio rather, to Audient is bus powered is kind of an important thing for me. And for those of you thinking they make the Thunderbolt powered interfaces, yes, they do. I had issues. Um, there's a video on this channel. If you watch, I compare the Aero. I had the Aero for a little while and I was using it on a PC. And a lot of people ask me, how are you using the Aero, which is Thunderbolt? Thunderbolt 3 on a PC. Well, that laptop was equipped with the Thunderbolt 3 port. So the problem with that, once you have a laptop, this was my personal experience. I don't know, maybe you guys have had a different experience to me with the, with the Aero, but my experience was I could not run that interface without having the laptop plugged in. And I must say, I, I get why, because Thunderbolt 3 probably takes a lot of power, especially when you're powering you know, an interface with unison preamps and so on and so forth. But the point is, even though that was bus powered by Thunderbolt 3, I had to carry my laptop's power supply around with me. It would not run the interface without the laptop plugged in to a source, to an outlet source. Number three, ease of use. You can get used to the Universal Audio's mixer view and stuff like that and all the features that it, have. it has. You can absolutely get used to that, but I have to say, as soon as I opened the Audient interface and their version of a mix view or their mix view, it was super easy, um, straight to the point. There wasn't a lot of flair going on, a lot of stuff I didn't need. Number four, proprietary plugins. And this is, again, for those of you watching this, it does go back to the Unison thing. They sound amazing, and I'm standing by that. Their plugins are awesome. But when you buy their plugins, you are dedicated to the Universal Audio hardware. I don't like the idea of being stuck to one interface or one type of hardware whenever I want to go somewhere. And like say um, the LA-2A, obviously they're going to do it the right way because they own the actual hardware, right? They can manufacture the actual one. Sounded amazing, but to me, it didn't sound way better than other third-party plugins that make a very similar or a knockoff version of that plugin if that makes sense. Hopefully, if you guys don't agree with me, that's okay, that's your opinion. These are just all my opinion, okay? And number five, and this is the biggest one, so I saved it for the end. Windows Mac compatibility, holy crap. If you, okay, so there's a guy on YouTube, he has a video and he goes over how he bought a Universal Audio interface, the Apollo, and had nothing but problems with it. And it was Curtis King, actually Curtis King. Shout out to Curtis King for making a video on this very topic and why he didn't go with Universal Audio. He ended up with going with Apogee, I believe. So my experience is, yeah, it's got a Windows-based version interface, but my problem is I switch from Mac to PC on a regular basis, if not for me myself. Like right now I'm using a PC, my laptop is a PC, but three months ago I had an M1 MacBook Air. Okay, so now you're telling me I have to buy an interface that's either Mac or PC. Some programs I use for you know editing certain things, it's not available on Mac yet. Or I have a gaming laptop and I want a game on it, so I have my PC for that. I'm not using a Mac for gaming. All of the Universal Audio 3.0, right? So you got the USB 3.0 for Windows. Well, I hope you really like your Windows machine because you're not gonna be able to use any of those on Mac. They're stuck to it and that's just how it goes. I even tested this. I bought the Windows only version of the interface because I was rocking the MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air and my, my gaming PC. I tested it. I plugged that Thunderbolt 3 into my MacBook and surprisingly enough, the MacBook didn't even recognize anything was plugged into it. 
Um, and I say surprisingly enough, even though it's not meant for that, Apple's usually pretty good about letting you know something's plugged in, like, hey, this doesn't compute or whatever, this isn't compatible with our system. It didn't even show it at all. It powered it, it actually powered it because it was Thunderbolt 3, so it did power the, the interface, but it just, it, the Mac wouldn't even pick up on it. So anyway, um, kind of rambling a little bit, but I just wanted to get my personal opinion out about why I switched over to Audient. And to be honest with you, I am not looking back towards Universal Audio. And I'm just gonna close by saying this. Again, I think Universal Audio is amazing. They have great plugins. They've got great uh, converters and preamps. It's a great interface. And I'm not knocking it if you're, if you're deciding to go with that, then try it out. But for me, I've used Universal Audio stuff since probably 2016, 2015, 16. And I'm just tired of the back and forth dance of, okay, it works with this, great, but it doesn't work so well with this. And it works with this, but not so much with this. And that's kind of where I am. So if you guys got anything out of this video, continued support is greatly appreciated. And uh, subscribe would be great. And you can hit that thumbs up if you're feeling antsy. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.